Python programming and video tutorials. In the last couple of videos, we've been checking out how we could possibly crack a Unix user account password. So these last few modules in Python we've been checking out have been Unix-specific services. That's kind of been the theme for these last few videos. And we've been looking at SPWD, the Shadow Password Database. Before that, PWD, which was the regular password database. And those two things were kind of very different. If you recall, the PWD database was uh, reading all these things out of a file in uh, the Unix directory and file system that was etc. passwd for password. So that was world readable. Like we, as any user, could check it out. If I cat that file, uh, passwd, you'll notice that we can read all the user's stuff, and Fubar, a user that we've been created, that we, we have already created and have been playing with, is available there. So, in the documentation, it shows us these different attributes and things that are returned to us, and normally it would show us the encrypted password. The thing is, there was a note here that we were checking out. This gives us, normally, or at least in some cases, the modern Unix systems have a so called shadow password system. So, the password field is not visible, it's replaced with the letter X in most cases, where instead the encrypted password is stored in its set shadow, which is not world readable. So you can see right here in our example, yeah, foobar is a uh, is X. So that's not what we wanted. We wanted it set Rashado. So we moved on to the SPW module and uh, this would show us the encrypted password. Now remember this is root, you, or at least you have to be able to use it as root. It's not world readable. So if I were to run sudo cat etc shadow now we can read it. And uh, we see all the same users, and our foobar user right down here, we can see his encrypted password. Uh, you may have noticed, at least I don't know if you would notice, but I'm just going to tell you right up front that I did some more toying around in between recordings of these videos, so I have a different, uh, I have a different encrypted password, but it is still the same raw password for apples. So, Alright, back to what we were looking at. The same note that was telling us about this uh, change with etc. password and etc. shadow, the shadow password system and the regular password system. It tells us that the password field usually contains a password encrypted with this DES derived algorithm. And it links us to this module crypt. And that's what we're going to be toying with in this video. So here, check this out. Crypt is a function that checks Unix passwords. The module implements an interface to the crypt routine, which is a one-way hash function based upon a modified DES algorithm. You can check out the man page for more details if you're interested, but the possible uses kind of let us use Python to test and uh, try and in at least follow through with accepted type passwords from the user and attempt to crack Unix passwords with a dictionary. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That sounds like what we want to be doing here. So this this function, sorry, this module only has one function, so I guess you could kind of consider it a function. <laughs> rather than a module. Um, but yeah, it includes the function crypt, and it takes two arguments, word and salt. So word will usually be the user's password as typed at the prompt or in a graphical interface, so it's kind of like the raw data, the simple plain text password. And salt is usually a random two-character string, which will be placed to perturb the DES algorithm in one of 4,096 ways. <laughs> Now, the characters in salt must be in a set from A to Z or 0 to 9, alphabetical letters and numeric digits. So, it will return the hash password as a string, which will be composed of the characters from the same alphabet and set as the salt. So, normally, you would be able to see, here, here I'll, I'll try and show you an example of this, we would have a salt or a, a password encrypted like this, and the first two letters, uh, like let's say F, K. <laughs> I don't. I don't know really know. I don't really know why I chose the two letters F and K, um, but those two letters would be the salt, and that's what you would pass in there. But I want to bring your attention to a little bit more of the documentation. There's a note here at the bottom that says, since a few of the crypt extensions allow different values with different sizes in the salt, it's recommended to use the full crypted password as the salt when checking for a password. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. So let's get to it. Let's build a script that will do this uh, looping through a dictionary and um, actually trying to break and crack this Unix password that we set up for our FUBAR user. So we need a dictionary. Now, I want to show you just how easy this is. I'm going to go on Google, and because you know the internet is our best resource, and 
I'm going to look for a dictionary file. And uh, you look through some of these results here, and I want to find someone that's doing the same thing I am. And uh, this guy here, that sounds like in Stack Exchange, where can I find good dictionaries for dictionary attacks? So <laughs> we'll, we'll check that out. And it looks like, yeah, he's, he kind of has the same thing that we're doing. Wants to play with the dictionary attack. And hey, this first response gives us some links. So let's check those out, follow those. And boom. We've got some dictionaries that come with common tools and uh, cracking utilities. So, well, I see John the Ripper there, which is a pretty common uh, and well-known tool and utility for this sort of thing. So, hey, there's a compress file here. Uh, so, I'll open that up with my archive manager. I'll extract the file, and you can see all of these kind of pretty common, you know, like passwords. Here, I'll, I'll shrink it down so I can show you more. So, we'd be able to loop through this list and hopefully find our uh, password, right? Let's try it out. I'm actually going to save this as a new file. I'll call mine uh, passwords.txt. And I might already have a, yeah, I already have an example of this. Oh, I'll just replace that. Close out of this. And now we'll get to our script editor or our text editor and actually start to write the script. So. I've got Sublime Text open. I'm going to create a new one. I'll call mine passwords crack.py. And here we go. <laughs> I'm going to use Colorama, actually, to uh, display things out in color in the terminal so it looks a little bit more professional. You can do this if you'd like. It's entirely up to you. So this video might turn into a longer video since we're going to be writing this code as well as the demonstration and experimenting and, and playing with it. So I hope you don't mind me. But uh, here we go. From Colorama, I want to import everything. Import four as colors. And uh, actually, since we need to be the root user to be able to read through the etc. shadow file, right? We're actually going to be importing the OS module as well, so we can test actually uh, what our user identification number is. So I'm actually going to include that straight away. From OS, import get UID. That's the function that'll get the user ID of this process. And then, of course, we need the crypt function from our crypt module. So let's define a simple main function. We'll go through with the normal Python boilerplate code. And here we go. Let's test, first of all, if get user ID is equal to zero. Now, most of you may know that um, the root user has a, a user ID value of zero. Anyone else uh, does not. So if I, in the shell, echo out my user ID variable, you can see that right now it's a 1,000. If I try and run sudo echo user ID variable, so I run this as root. Oh, I might need to be in bash, actually, for that. sudo bash. Now if I echo my user ID, I am zero. And you can see I'm logged in as root here. So, okay. Just a small demonstration for that, and we'll get back to it. If the user ID is zero, actually we'll print out if it is not zero, what we can do is we can print out colors dot yellow. You must be root to run this utility. Some real simple. And then we'll exit out with a one. So we know that it's an error code message rather than a zero for success. Let's see this in our code if we can get it to work. Chmod password crack.py. If I run password crack.py. Oh, I do need my shebang line. How could I forget? Now I run this. Been. file name is passwords crack rather than password crack so that was an old file that I was using to kind of review this lesson and review this tutorial so I just removed that and now we should be able to run passwords crack okay cool and I must be root to run this utility so if I'm not then we can just say print um, I'll do colors dot blue or something Scion. And 
then we'll actually allow them to... Actually, we'll... Should we take an argument? That would be kind of cool. Yeah, let's take arguments. So... From sys import argv. That's all, that's all we really need. If length of argv is less than or equal to 1, and we'll ask raw input, or should we'll We'll use yellow as a, as a prompt here as well. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. It's entirely up to you. You're the one writing this script, not me. <laughs> I'll actually print it out and then do raw input after. Since that's going to be a long line. Is color does not reset a thing? Let's try it. We'll say username is equal to what they enter. Let's see how it works. Must be root. Okay, I'll run it with sudo. What user should we try and crack the password for? Let's say foobar. Okay, cool. Reset does work. Cracking Unix password for user foobar. Awesome. I'll change this to yellow. So that's really simple, and that'll work just fine for us. And if it is else, let's say username can equal argv1, since argv0 would be the name of the program. So now we can, of course, run sudo passwords crack. Without any arguments, foobar will work for us, and we can run it with the username foobar, and then it'll, okay, trying to crack the password for Unix user foobar. Sweet. So, now we've got some kind of pre-established stuff going on. Let's say that the dictionary file, dic file can equal open passwords.txt, and we want to look through this and also test for what, the, what everything is. We also need, of course, the password for our uh, user. So, I actually forgot to include that. Let's say from uh, spwd import get spnam. I think that's it, yeah. So let's say encrypted password can equal get spnam for the username, which would in this case be foobar. And I just want to print that out. password used to be looks to be the encrypted password so let's check this out oh can't concatenate those let's say we want that actually to be one because remember in our idle uh, process or when I when I showed you this example in idle what we had was import spwd spwd dot get spnam remember this will return a struct object for us SP this is you as root. Okay. Now that I'm logged in as a, a Python terminal in root, now we can try this. So, if I ran foobar on him, we'd get this struct and the second uh, data. Sec the second index in there was the password that we wanted. So when we subtract one from that because of our computer offset, we can start counting from zero, we get one. So that's what we're using there. So encrypted password looks to be... Now we can run this, all that. Okay, cool. So now we'll actually start to look through it and crack it. For password in dictfile.readlines... 
we'll actually test for new password, and we'll say that can equal crypt dot or crypt password, because remember this would be the word, the plain text word that we're looking at, and then the encrypted password as our salt. We want the full thing to work through there. So if and we'll print out get some nice uh, I don't want to include this at the very end. Sorry if you guys don't mind me doing random formatting for how I want the, the script to look. So we'll just have a small little output for what color we're, or what password we're, we're looking at at the moment. And uh, we'll test if, hmm. So if this password is, the new password is the same as the new password, that means that, okay, we found, we got the crack. So we'll display out there. Password found. I'll kill all that stuff. Print. Reset. The new pass. The cracked password is what we can say. The cracked password is password. And I'll add a uh, little color there. Colors dot. or something. It's up to you guys. You're the programmer here. And else we can say we did not find it. So in that case we would say password failed. Red. And we'll just we'll just keep going along just like that. And we would break out. And then at that point, we're done. So we can just exit with a... Or... Before we break out, we can say, no password crack was found. Try another dictionary file. And we'll exit with a 1. So it's an error message. Not an error message, but, you know, a, a failure flag. And, okay, so it looks like we kind of got our, our, our loop going on and our simple, our simple detection set up, but I kind of actually want to know how many we go through until we find the, the password, because that would be kind of cool. So let's set up a count variable that keeps track of all this stuff. So if we didn't find the password, then count will increase. So I set it up initializing right above our loop, and then if we don't get it, then we're going to increment to it. And uh, we'll say it took uh, count. Remember to concatenate that to a string since it is an integer right now. Scion. Okay, so now it just simply displays how many color, how many passwords we've tried to go through. So let's try and play with this now. Hopefully we get something cool. If I run it without being root, remember it tells us you need to be root to run this utility, so we run it as us. Uh, sudo, and we want to crack the password for foobar. 
So now it's going to loop through all of these and try to uh, actually find our password. You can see it's going crazy right now trying to look for it. And hopefully it gets it. If it doesn't, I mean, hey. <laughs> I might go through all this stuff and not get it. But you know what's interesting, actually, here, is see how the ellipsis right here is on a different line than the password? Ooh. You know what I'm thinking. You know what you should be thinking. Take a look at our, uh, actually, our passwords thing here. Passwords variable. This is likely including what uh, is included in the text file, of course. If I fire up passwords.txt, there is, of course a new line character from one password to the next. So what we, will have to what we will have to include here is the rstrip function for our password. We can say password is going to equal the same password that it was with the very end of it and the new line characters stripped away. So password.rstrip. Now when we run this, hey, we're going to get some good stuff. Let's say we want it for foobar. doop -a doop -a doop -a doop -a doop -a and hey, password found. It took 354 different attempts to find it. The crack password is apples. Sweet. Looks like our color coding got a little a little funky there. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. I'll fix it real right away. But dude, look at that. We got we got the password. We're able to find it with a dictionary attack doing the same method of encrypting what we would think the password to be with the dictionary attack and using the encrypted password as the salt or as kind of what we're comparing it to and what we're using to encrypt. So that's kind of cool, right? <laughs> like we just we just cracked a, a, a really insecure of course, kind of a unsanitary or not that not that secure password, but we got apples. We got we got it. If I try it for my own account, it'll go through all this stuff and there's no way it's going to find anything because I would never use a dictionary word as my password. But since our script is kind of nice, it'll tell us, like, eh, we weren't able to get it. We, we <laughs> You should try another dictionary attack. But even then, it's the hope that the user is using a common password in a, in a common dictionary word or, I don't know, not all of these are dictionary words, so I guess it's kind of a, a different thing, but common passwords. And mine is nowhere near... Uh, a common password. <laughs> but yeah, like like I said, our script will tell us very nicely that, well, we couldn't find it and try another dictionary file if you are really trying. But One of the cool things it might be able to do if you want to uh, work with this a little bit more is you see how it's always inputting a new line every single time? That probably takes a, a, a lot of screen space. It's outputting a ton of stuff. We could just have it display um, on the same line and just kind of flush the output and re-put it on the same line over and over and over again, kind of like apt does, or if you're trying to install something. Right? I don't know, there's a lot of opportunities for it, but this is a simple script that will kind of make sure that you're root, so you'll have the ability to look at the user's password, which I know isn't exactly cracking or hacking because you have that caveat, but for this educational and learning experience so you know how to do it, that's okay. And... Um, of course, you need the OS module to test your user ID to make sure you are root. Uh, we played with argu a lot, command line arguments. We didn't really have to, but it, I think it was kind of nice to add to our script. And uh, Colorama, of course, added some nice output to us, for us, even though it was probably really annoying when I'm just trying to uh, add those colors here and there. And uh, what else is there? And, of course, SPW, our, uh, our pass SPWD, our password database, to actually get what the encrypted password is. So, cool. I think I'm done. <laughs> I think that's all that I wanted to, uh, to show for you guys. Um, I hope you guys are able to walk through this tutorial and program with me. I know it's been kind of long, but hopefully it's well worth it and really a, a cool learning experience for these last few videos. So, thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe like the video, maybe leave me a comment, some constru constructive criticism. And if you're, if you're feeling up for it, subscribe. You know I'd love that. So, see you soon.